Welcome back. This is continuing coverage of HCEG Summit here out of Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm here with Maria Filipova, VP of Anthem Innovation at Anthem. Thank Great. you so much for being here, Great Maria. to be here. You just presented on a panel. Um, tell me about some of the takeaways you had for members. Great. Um, well, it was a very lively discussion. Um, it got progressively more exciting because we started unpacking the changes in healthcare that we're seeing. Not only changes driven by technology, but also changes by driven by new entrants in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So for me, the real takeaway is, as we absorb all the change and disruption that's coming into healthcare, how do we stay focused and true to what is the best thing to do for the patient? And how do we stay focused and true to the pragmatic reality of taking technology and weaving it through the workflow end to end for our physicians, for our patients, for our partners mm -hmm. um, in the ecosystem. And so the new entrants that you refer to, can you give me an example of uh, new players that have come into the space? Yeah. What we're seeing in healthcare is um, a lot of te uh, technology companies coming in. We're seeing what I describe as those creative collaborations that otherwise would seem um, impossible. So partners who used to be competitors or vendors or regular are coming together and um, I think they're joining forces in the effort to solve what I described those big audacious utility problems that are so pervasive so pro problematic for so many people that actually collaborating is worth the transaction cost and okay. I'll give you an example um, some technologies are very uh, well suited to some of those utility problems like blockchain we're seeing multiple parties coming together around blockchain coalitions and consortia in 2018, we had two blockchain consortia announced. Announced in 2019, just as of June, there were five new oh. blockchain consortia announced. And uh, the one that we are part of, that Anthem is part of, is a consortium that's uh, comprised of Aetna, Cigna, HCSC, PNC, which is a financial services company, yeah. and multiple providers. So you're seeing how competitors, providers, and financial services institutions are coming together to solve some of those bigger system-wide problems, if you will. Will this blockchain, uh, will these blockchain solutions be addressing cloud uh yeah, so here's what, access to data that's exactly support. right. Um, blockchain has the promise to solve some of those foundational problems. For example, how do we manage patient consent? So every time a patient wants to get their data, they don't have to file multiple paperwork and go through multiple steps to get that. How do we make it easy for physicians to get credentialed so they can practice in their specialty in certain states? That process now takes anywhere between 80 to 180 days sometimes. So if we're able to store that data on the blockchain securely and access it, that solves a lot of problems for um, a whole host of ecosystem players. And these are ne not necessarily um, problems or capabilities that we derive our competitive advantage from. It's a utility for the whole system, if you will. Okay, if you have so many players coming in at once, is there really enough... Um are there enough issues really for them to address, or is that sort of Well, luckily of there's no shortage of problems in healthcare, uh -huh, that's true. so we're very lucky in that respect. But when we think about um, some of the system-wide issues, we're looking at collaborating um, across things like how do we accelerate the onset of value-based payments or outcomes-based billing, and could we think about bundled payments and track what are the services that are associated with a specific condition or a treatment, so we go from one one episode or one procedure at a time to a full bundle of procedures that take care of, let's say, a knee surgery or hip replacement. Okay. Um, so these are the types of solutions that would allow us to have visibility into cost and quality and outcomes um, that would benefit both the providers of those services but also the patients as well. Mm -hmm. and Aside from this area, are you looking at other types of in innovations at Anthem that you can share with us? Yes, we are very, um, very much looking forward to um, the disruption in healthcare because we believe that business as usual is no longer an option. Healthcare is changing, and that's a good thing. We've chosen to accept that uh, challenge of digitizing healthcare and digitizing what we describe as the middleman between the supply side of healthcare and the demand side of healthcare. 
there. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the capabilities that we're building in that digital platform have to do with democratizing access to care. So we're using conversational AI and natural language processing to allow members to triage their symptoms so they could decide whether or not they go to the emergency room or they can wait to go to call their physician or they get connected to a uh, support program that me, we may have available. Okay. We are also allowing members to get connected with physicians um, via our telemedicine platforms and we're also looking at ways to provide services for the uninsured market. So a lot of work on in that effort in that area and a lot more to come in a couple of in the next couple of months in terms of announcements. Oh wow that's exciting I wish you could give us a little hint. But <laughs> the hint is we're taking care of members in uh, the market that are that we're serving both on the insured side and the non-insured side we're looking for a digital only product for the non-insured members um, and we believe the technology is really there to augment our capability to deliver the right care at the right member at the right price at the right time um, so from that perspective there's a huge opportunity to mobilize the supply of care services that we have and also expand that care continuum so we're not only looking at clinicians and clinical teams, but we're also looking at social services, local communities, because we're taking care of the whole patient. Um, we are now very much, um, uh, very well versed in understanding of the um, factors that happen outside of clinical settings that actually impact the clinical outcome. And that's where a lot of our focus goes into the social determinants of health, not only the clinical side of the equation. Now, some of the members here are obviously going to be very interested in, in what you're talking about on yeah. the innovation side. Have you found conversations that uh, will be of value to you when you go back to Anthem? We are always um, interested in um, meeting with uh, entrepreneurs, new entrants, startups, and our partners in healthcare because what we have found out is that the best ideas, the best answers to the toughest questions don't always reside in the four walls of our own organization. And so for us, it's been really interesting to find how people are thinking about the same challenges of uh, delivering, delivering the right care to the right members. How do we take care of members in their community, members who don't speak English, mm -hmm. members who can't afford to go um, and have the copay to go visit a physician. So for us, it's been really insightful to see um, uh, some, how other organizations are answering some of these challenges that we have as well. How, how can health systems um, support innovation better? How can there be more collaboration between uh, yeah. different stakeholders? Um, it's a very important question, it's a fundamental question and it starts with, um, I, I do believe it starts with keeping an open mind and staying focused on the problem. If we all keep an eye out to what is it that we're trying to do and solve together and be less focused on what is my role, what is my little turf and what my little box that I typically play in. Um, that's where some of the unexpected collaborations and breakthroughs really come from. Um, having an open mindset and innovation, the way we think about innovation is not necessarily a portfolio of initiatives or pilots, it's a way of thinking. And it starts with that open mindset to what is possible um, and um, being comfortable to be just on that right side of the discomfort level. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah. That's what it starts with. Okay, and how are you finding the meeting so far? It's been great. It's been um, really thoughtful. Um, I'm seeing um, leaders who are very committed to impact, um, who are coming in, in here to not necessarily uh, promote what they're working on, but really go after problems together. So I'm finding uh, a lot of that open-mindedness and willingness to collaborate and go after problems jointly. Okay, Maria Filipova, thank you so much thank for your you. time. Great to be here.